Hi guys, it's Ashley. Welcome back or thanks for joining me depending on when you found this channel. It is uh, Pride Month. Whoop, 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 whoop. And if you can't tell by my username, Kanda Gay Ash, or you know, my appearance, I am so gay. So fucking gay. Um, and I wanted to celebrate this Pride Month in the best way that I know how, and that is obviously through books. So I'm going to talk to you guys about my top five LGBTQ book recommendations. Now, I'm essentially going to tell you what they're about, tell you why I love them so much and try to convince you guys to make awful financial decisions with me because that's essentially what the book community is. If I'm spending all of my money on books, you're spending all of your money on books. If I'm making choices that I shouldn't be making, you guys are making these choices with me. That's just how it works. So anyway, strap yourselves in, get ready for some gay book recommendations and enjoy. I just want to put this out there. I am going to be recommending you my top five this is not in any order. This isn't like number five to the best one. I don't like making decisions like that because, you know, it's hard to rank books. It's hard to put books above each other, especially because I feel like all of the books that I'm going to be recommending have very, very different vibes. You know, some are like weird and psychotic. Some are like soft and tender. You know, some are a combination of both. And I just feel like it's hard to rank different things like that. So regardless of what order these books are coming in, it's not like worst to best or anything like that. It is just five books. Now that has been disclosed, let's start actually talking about the books. I also would just like to say, usually I record my videos with the front camera because, you know, I like to be able to see what I'm doing. But I've realised the quality is not as good. So I'm currently using back camera and it is very disorientating. I don't know what I look like. I don't know what... I. I have no idea what this is going to turn out like. So if I seem a little bit awkward or a little bit like up in the clouds, I'm overthinking in my head because that's what I do. So please bear with me while I get used to this new setup. I also broke one. <laughs> I also broke one half of my uh, ring light. I've got really, I call it man hands and I just don't know how to be soft and delicate with things. So as I was like plugging it in, I literally must have like rammed it in way too hard and I completely knocked out the section where you plug the light in. So I have one light now. Essentially, this is a hot mess. Isn't that why you all like me, if I'm in a little bit of a mess? Okay, I'm actually going to talk about the books now. So the first book I'm going to talk about, don't quote me on this, but I'm like 99% sure that it is by an independent author. And if you don't know what an independent author means, it essentially means they publish their book themselves. They didn't get signed by a publisher. They're not like backed up by a publisher. So you know when you get books and on the spine it will say like, like here I've got um, Hot Key books, you've got Penguin books, you've got Harper Collins. Those are like publishers. And essentially what that means is they have an entire team behind them where they will go through like drafts they will have editors they will have people who help like push the book and promote the book independent authors essentially have to do like 75 jobs all by themselves and i think it's such an amazing feat and a lot of people look at independent authors and think that they can't be good because they're independent authors that's not necessarily the case just because they don't have a big team behind them doesn't mean their books aren't great and i think this book essentially proves that point for me now the book is Angels Before Man by Raphael Nicholas and the representation in this is men loving men and the author has actually came out and said that the majority of the characters within this book are also transgender which I love because I feel as though when you are looking at LGBTQ books you'll notice that there is a massive trend that there are a hell of a lot of men loving men and then women loving women is kind of secondary and then you'll notice that trans books are kind of always at the bottom and I think that's a trend within the community as a whole that trans rights seem to always kind of fall so I love it that I have a lot of books that I can recommend that have kind of unrepresented areas of our community. So anyway, Angels Before Man, you know the story of Satan got kicked out of heaven by God and then he fell down to the earth and he became like the fallen angel. It is essentially that, but it is obviously the queer retelling of Satan's story. And I absolutely love this because one of my favourite things within books is when it has religious complexities within Um I think religion in itself is very, it's a very touchy uh, conversation for some people. I myself am not religious, but if you are religious, I 100% respect that. I think it's absolutely beautiful that you guys have that thing in your life that encourages you to act in certain ways and that gives you a little bit of hope and faith in something. Um, but I do think that religion and sexuality and gender definitely can like overlap. And I love when books explore that. Whether it's in, you know, a religious person discovering their sexuality and questioning themselves or um, a non-religious person finding themselves in a religious space and then not understanding why they can't be accepted. 
me myself I have had some bad experiences with religion and my sexuality and I'm not going to hold that against all people who are religious or anything like that um but as someone who has had these experiences I think reading about them in books offers you a little bit of comfort and I think it's the case for anything like that um like if you've gone through something and then you read it in a book and you see these characters deal with it it automatically gives you comfort and I think that's exactly why a lot of us like reading because that's essentially what it is it is a way to distract yourself and get comfort and support and just realize that you're not so alone and I think that's exactly what this book did for me um obviously I'm not a man who loves other men but I am a gay person and I have had issues with religion and I think the way it was handled within this story was just absolutely phenomenal I'll give you a quick rundown, obviously I'm not going to spoil it too much for you, but in this book Satan is created, um, well Lucifer is created by God and he's like God's favourite angel, he is like the one that everyone loves, he's the most loved son and he is living in heaven and everything is perfect and everything is wonderful and then he starts to not necessarily question God but he gets particularly close to another angel and he starts having romantic feelings for this angel and God is not happy about this because in God's eyes no one should be loved on the same level that you love God no one should be put on the same pedestal as him he should be he should come above everything and everyone but Lucifer is starting to gain these feelings and and these feelings are growing and they're growing and they're growing and he starts to realize that maybe the love he is having for this particular angel is on the same level as the love he has for God and this does not make God happy and then Lucifer starts to question a lot of other stuff about God and heaven and he starts to wonder in his own mind why is God so special why do we have to blindly follow him why does he get to essentially control our lives and tell us what we can and can't do why can I not have free will why can I not have free choice and essentially this questioning of free will and free choice is what led to God banishing uh, Lucifer because in heaven you've got like this perfect environment where everyone kind of just functions the way they're supposed to function and he was going against the grain and he was questioning things that he shouldn't be questioning and then like I said, I think it's a great way of exploring religious complexities within sexuality and the way it was written was just so beautiful. So you are following alongside Lucifer and it's kind of um, one of my biggest favourite things is when people make you question your moral standpoints and that's essentially what happened in this book because we've all heard of the devil, we've all heard of Lucifer, you know, it's what you get warned about as a kid like oh if you do that you're going to go to hell or you know God won't like that and you find yourself sympathising with Lucifer in this book, you find yourself hearing the alternative uh, perspective that you never get to hear and I think that's what made it so interesting for me. When you end up sympathizing with the villain or the bad person, you start to question everything you know. And I love that in a book. I love when books make me think and think and think. Angels Before Man is um, it's one of those books I have thought about it at least once a week since I read it. I think it was like two, three years ago. I read it on Kindle Unlimited and I'm on the I'm on the lookout to buy the physical copy because it has some of the most beautiful quotes I've ever seen. I love when a book has good quotes that will literally stick in your mind and you'll never forget. And this book definitely has that for me. I'll upload some of them around me so you can get, um, have a little read. Um, it is genuinely so beautiful. It is such a beautiful exploration of religion and understanding yourself and what it means to kind of be a conscious being that has their own thoughts and opinions and how you differ from those around you. I genuinely think that this is one of the best books I've read in the last five years. I very, I cannot see anything knocking this out of the top five spot anytime soon, if I'm honest with you. Now, book two follows a very similar pattern to Angels Before Man, because number one, it is again, men loving men. And number two, it again, explores kind of like the religious complexities of uh, sexuality. It is very dark, very twisted. It, it explores themes of like love, obsession, lust, mental health and I think it is a very dark book. It, um, it definitely dives into like the most complex inner thoughts and feelings that a lot of us have had and the book is These Violent Delights by Mika Nemereva. This is again another book that I read online that I am dying to get the physical copy of so I can read it and annotate it. Um, very very excited to get into this again and because it's one of those books it's so deep that I feel as though even though I've already read it once I will need to read it a second time to truly understand it. In this book you have two boys, you have one boy, I'm not going to lie to you, I can't remember their names so I'm just going to call them boy one and boy two. Boy one 
kind of a weirdo, kind of a loner. Um, they're very religious, their families like, and their community is very religious, and they don't have any friends. They're kind of like one of those nerds that just sits at home all day in their own little world. They can't really emotionally connect with anyone. Uh, their family is kind of poor, and their dad has just passed away. And boy two is the complete opposite. He's very charismatic, he's very popular, he's very rich, he's very well loved, he's got a very bright future ahead of him. And I think on the note of this, one of the things I love is that both of these boys represent what is known as sociopathism, but on the opposite ends of the spectrum. So you have some sociopaths that don't know how to communicate, they don't know how to form bonds because they can't understand emotions and emotional connections. They end up completely alone and isolated. But then you also have the other end of being a sociopath like you'll have like Ted Bundy and like the typical serial killer profile where they are very charismatic and they don't understand emotions but they've learned how to acknowledge them and manipulate them to your own use and these characters represent each end of that and that is one of the most intriguing things about this book is that it explores the themes of like mental health and mental health issues on different ends of the spectrum and how two people can have the exact same issue but represent it in just completely different ways um Anyway, these two boys end up meeting and they end up forming an unhealthy kind of connection with each other. They understand that these two people understand each other in a way that no one else ever will. Yes, they might be on opposite ends of the spectrum, but they still get what it is to live the way that they live. And because of this, because they feel like they are the only people in the entire world that can understand one another, they form a connection and they end up becoming really, really close friends. But when you put two people with these kinds of issues in the same room together, it is essentially a recipe for disaster because there's not that moral conscious pe like piece in, in, in either of their heads that will say, maybe we shouldn't do this. Maybe this isn't good. You know, maybe this is a bad decision. They essentially feed off each other. Like one of them will say like, oh, we should do this. And it is like something so heinous, something so evil. And the other one will go, sounds like a good idea. Sounds like an amazing idea. And again, I'm not going to spoil it, but they essentially do something together that they shouldn't do and they do it because they trust each other and they think that you know it's us against the world however because of their issues because they they can't form bonds like correctly because they don't have any trust they start questioning oh well what if they tell someone what if they decide to hand me in what if they decide to turn against me and this um these like unhealthy thoughts of like paranoia end up fueling them two to go against each other but whilst their paranoia is fueling them to go against each other their unhealthy connection is fueling them to stay with each other and it is essentially like two halves of a magnet trying to go with each other when they can't um so you watch them kind of like love one another and want to be with one another while also wanting to hurt the other person to protect themselves and like i said at the beginning of this video it is essentially just it explores like love obsession betrayal all of like the very deep heartfelt like vicious emotions it explores in such beautiful ways and again and you're going to notice a pattern i'm a very big fan of books that are quote worthy books that have those one quotes that will stay in your head that you want tattooed on your body forever those quotes that even if you forget what the book is about it will never leave your side and again this book has that i will put some up around here it is just it's very thought provoking again. It's just one of those books I think about so often and I can't wait to reread it. The next book I'm going to recommend isn't as dark and as twisted as the first two, but it is still kind of dark and twisted if you think about it. Um, it is The Society for Soulless Girls by Laura Stephen. This is one of my all time favourite books. I don't know what it is about it, but something within it just completely resonated with me. It is sapphic, so it is women who love other women. And um, essentially, you know Jekyll and Hyde? It is a Jekyll and Hyde retelling set in kind of like an all-girls boarding school with women who love other women and elements of witchcraft rituals. Um, I think that the main reason I like this book is as a woman, I feel as though there's a lot of pressure put on you in society to be a certain way. And you're never going to fulfill these needs because it's like be pretty, but don't wear too much makeup. Don't age, but don't get your face full, filled with filler, you know. Be strong and independent, but not so strong and independent that you threaten men. Be intelligent, but don't want a career over having a family. And I feel as though when you're a woman and you grow up as a woman, you are so like you are so weighed down by all of these expectations that you feel like you can't breathe. And in this book, the main character is a girl who essentially goes, fuck you, 
fuck all of your expectations I'm going to do what I want to do and I'm going to do it regardless of what you think and I think it was just really freeing to see a female character written in such a way and I think that's exactly why I am so connected to this story because of the main character and everything she represents. The dedication for this book is for the girls who were born angry and I think that's such a great way of um, hooking someone in because I feel as though everyone's allowed to feel sort of a default emotion and I feel like anger for women is something that you're not allowed to feel essentially because if you do get angry it's oh she's being dramatic oh she's being overly emotional oh I don't know why she's acting like this I feel like when women are angry it is never really taken seriously so I love when I see angry women within books because I think yes yes if anyone in this world should be feeling full of rage and full of anger it is women you know not necessarily as a whole because I know intersectionality applies and you've got some women out there that are like able-bodied and rich and but as a whole essentially women are the ones who have been in society for years and years and years oppressed and judged and held back and then if you add to the fact like I said that these are sapphic women it's it adds a whole nother layer to why they should be so fucking angry um like I said it is a Jekyll and Hyde retelling which I think is really interesting anyway because we all love the classics we've all heard of them but I do think that sometimes classics can be quite inaccessible because of the language and everything like that so I love when there are modern takes on classic retellings because you're not going to understand the story completely but you're going to get this fun little twist on it and um Laura Stevens her kind of niche is that she does do retellings so she has another sapphic book and it is a Dorian Gray retelling um but yeah I think you can either judge books based on plot or character sometimes the plot will be amazing but the characters will fall flat or sometimes the characters will be amazing but the plot falls flat for me this book is definitely a character book the plot was great the plot was super fun it was super fresh it was just really intriguing but I think like I said the characters are the things that like sucked its claws into me and made me want to read it more and like I said I am now a massive massive Laura Stevens fan because of how amazing this book was for me Number four is another sapphic book and it is Crow's War. This has always been one of my all-time favourites. I can't remember when I read it, maybe two, three years ago. Book two, I'm going to be honest with you, I did not like book two. I thought book two fell really flat compared to the potential that book one left it with. But I feel as though if I would have just read book one and left it at that, I would have been, I would have been fulfilled. Sometimes you'll finish a book and you'll think, I need to know what happens. I feel as though Crow's War, you can kind of leave it and that's okay. Um, so yeah, I really recommend book one, but book two, not so much. Anyway, this is a sapphic fantasy sci-fi enemies to lovers. And in this world, you have humans and you have automate. And automate are essentially like handcrafted robot people. And they essentially are, they look like humans, they function like humans, they act like humans, but they have been genetically modified to be superior to humans. So they're faster, they're stronger, they're more intelligent, they last longer, they don't age as quick. And um, in this world, humans were essentially the only thing that was like real. And then Automate got created. And over time, there was a massive war. And Automate are now like the, um, they're like the royal family. And humans have been put secondary. Humans are the ones who are being oppressed. They're the ones that are being beaten and killed. And they're poor and they can't get housing. They can't get jobs. And we follow the main character, who is a, who is a human girl. And her family got killed in a raid by the Automate. And she's made it her life's mission to get revenge on the Automate somehow. And she gets the perfect opportunity. She gets given a job in the palace to be a maidservant to the princess of the Automates. And she thinks to herself, this is the perfect chance to get revenge. If I kill the princess, they will be screwed. So she does. She gets into the uh, she gets into the palace and her, her goal is, I'm going to kill this princess. But while this is happening, the princess, the Automate princess, um, she starts uncovering things about her past, about her creation, about why the Automate are the way they are. And she starts finding out facts that make her start questioning everything that she knows about herself and her community. And she is essentially a lot closer to a human's way of thinking. And because the uh, human girl can see this, it now gets more complex. She can't just go in and kill her because she's not like the others and essentially we have like this big politically intriguing fantasy book that has layers of depth it has a really sweet romance it has really high like high fantasy fast-paced environments really greatly written and honestly like I said book one was one of my favorite books of all time I absolutely adored it
I actually might cry. So I finished the video and I was about to go and start editing it and then I realised that my mic died like halfway through it and now I can't redo it all. So if it, this seems choppy at any point, my apologies, my equipment had a fault. This is such a hot mess video. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. I think I got everything that I needed to say about um, Cryo's War. So I'm just going to move on to the fifth and final book. And that is How Followed With Us by Andrew Joseph White. Um, the representation in this book is absolutely amazing. We have the main character who is a transgender boy. And then they link up and meet up with other characters who are essentially all genders, all sexualities, all race and ethnicities. We also have some neurodivergent representation within the book as well. Um, Andrew Joseph White has been very well known for his wide range of representation and how well it is done. So this is why I feel as though if I am going to recommend a book during Pride Month, it is this book. Because it has, a, it, like I said, it has nearly every sexuality involved in it. It has like all like transgender, non-binary, gender fluid. Um, it covers like the whole spectrum of identities which i think is very important for pride month in this book our main character is benji he is a transgender boy and he has been raised in a religious cult and this cult essentially started armageddon and decided to wipe the population of the universe off because they believe that the second that everyone on the earth is dead that we can all descend to god um ascend 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 to god and then god will accept them all into his kingdom and he will start the world afresh and it'll be a brand new place for like a paradise there'll be no wars no issues and it'll be essentially a fresh clean state and they don't think that you can get this fresh slate until everyone in the world is dead so they want to turn um benji into the weapon that is going to finally end the world once and for all but benji doesn't really want to be a part of this number one because he has a moral conscience and number two like I said, he is a transgender boy and this court has obviously never been accepting of his gender or his sexuality. Um, so he decides to run away and as he's running away, he bumps into this LGBTQ youth group and essentially they were all at like their youth centre when all of this happened, their family and friends died. So they decided to stick together to try and survive. And he, number one, is very happy because he's found an entire group of people that are just like him, but he is their enemy. They know that he's from the court and they don't trust him. And essentially it is him trying to convince them that I'm not your enemy. I know that I was born and raised here, but I don't believe in their views. I don't believe in what they believe in. And please, you've got to help me. I'm trying to get away from them. I'm trying to survive too. And then it is essentially this queer LGBTQ youth group full of everything that this cult hates, trying to defeat this cult once and for all. And I just think, number one, like I said about Angels Before Man, I love when books have religious complexities in, especially when it's to do with sexuality and gender. Two, it has amazing representation. And three, I just think it's such a unique story. Like, what do you mean a religious court tried to turn its transgender boy into an Armageddon weapon to finish the world once and for all? And then he teams up with a group of queer youths to beat them. Like, that is so unique. And I think that's one of the amazing things about this author. He found like a gap in the market and it was his niche and he is now the go-to person. Um, the book is very horror-y, like it has a lot of details about gore and guts and violence. It has um, like very twisted and dark themes. So if you're not comfortable with like dark books, I wouldn't recommend it. But if you're someone like me and you want to go into something knowing it's gonna be a bit dark and twisted, I highly recommend it. But anyway, they were my five LGBTQ books that I recommended. Um, I always try to have as much like diversity within my representation that I possibly can because I've noticed a pattern within the within representation that it tends to be white gay men. And I'm not saying that white gay men don't deserve representation and don't deserve to find themselves within the media because of course they do. But when you only focus on such a small part of the community, you ignore that there are other people who need this too. Like there are black trans men out there. There are Asian, like lesbian women out there. There is a wide variety of people that fall within the LGBTQ plus community. And if you don't help them find books and representation for themselves, that's when issues start to arise. Like I came out in 2012, 2011, 2012. And um, back then bisexuality was like, like a known thing and it did not go down well. And I remember, um, I'd never seen like bisexual women on TV. I'd never seen lesbian women within books and things like that. And it definitely fed into my, my insecurities of like, I'm not supposed to be this way. I'm flawed, there's something wrong with me. And the first time I ever saw like a lesbian woman on television was the first moment it kind of hit me. And I was like, you're not broken. 
you're not weird you haven't like you're not wired wrong you don't need to change who you are to be accepted and it was the first moment that i realized there were other options out there and there were other people like me out there and that's exactly why representation is so is so important for people because there is someone out there right now that thinks the world would be better off if they were dead than being who they are i've seen it i've heard it i've witnessed it lgbtq youth at the minute are so at risk of violence of homelessness of mental health issues of suicide especially especially trans youth and i feel as though i'm not saying that books and representation will cure the world of all of its ills because it's a lot more deep rooted than that but if you at the end of the day can curl up with a book and read about a character that looks like you thinks like you and is you and you can see them battling through their issues and finding love and finding acceptance and having a reason to live it will comfort you in ways that you have no idea about and that's exactly why i make these videos i make these videos for the people who want to see themselves and need to know that trans joy exists gay joy exists that despite what's going on in the world you are not better off dead and i also just want to put this out there i hope you all have the best pride month known to man i hope you are safe i hope you are loved i hope you are filled with nothing but support if you are someone that is not out yet that is okay you are still part of our community you are still part of our pride i hope one day you do find yourself in that environment where you can be yourself you can be authentic you can feel safe with telling people who you are if you're still someone who is struggling again that is absolutely fine you are still part of our community we still love you if you're someone who's not sure anything like that you don't have to be like me you don't have to be out and proud and knowing to be part of our community and to celebrate pride pride is for everyone pride is for everyone regardless of if you've been out as gay for 25 years or if you've only just discovered it last week it is for everyone regardless of if you are in a safe home environment where you can use your your correct pronouns and your new name regardless of if you are a bisexual person who's never dated the opposite sex it does not matter the community is not supposed to be selective and i just hope that every single one of you not only have the best pride month but have the best life filled with love and happiness and safety and protection anyway now that all of that emotional stuff's out of the way um i hope you guys have enjoyed these book recommendations if you've read them let me know what you think if you haven't buy them buy them right now um but yeah i hope you guys have enjoyed this video i am planning to do more lgbtq book videos throughout the month because obviously it's pride but yeah um i hope you guys have a really really great day i hope you buy some new books and treat yourself and i just hope you feel good i've been me you've been you let's talk soon bye